So for the Great British Debate this hour, I'm asking, should MPs be allowed second jobs? Joining me now is former editor of the Labourist Peter Edwards, political commentator Reid Ibrahim, former MEP and businessman Ben Habib, and former Brexit Party MEP and political commentator Belinda De Lucy. Welcome to both of you. Right, I'm going to start with you, Belinda, um, because uh, especially with your background, Belinda, what do you think uh, and make of the idea that MPs should be allowed to have this second income? Well, I really welcome this report into MPs' uh, second jobs. I think transparency is absolutely key. It's one of the reasons I'm so grateful to be out of the EU because mm. the amount of money that was, was lost and misused and also dodgy corruption going on, and, and we don't have to worry about it anymore. So we can focus our, our attention entirely on our national par parliament, which is entirely right. So I think the transparency is great. They should have everything very clearly in view for the whole public of where they get their money from. Mm. It's essential, you know, that you have transparency when when there's so much money flowing through the, the seat of power and in, into mm. politics. However, I would say I really support second jobs for the following reasons. One, it gives MPs much greater perspective talking about certain issues in Parliament. You know, the Westminster bubble, when you you're just living in that building and your only life is politics can really disconnect you from the ma men and women on the ground. So there are nurses and doctors and lawyers in Parliament with, and people with other very interesting jobs. Um, secondly, being a politician is a very fickle job. You don't know when you're going to be, you know, out on your tail. You don't mm. know when someone's going to call a snap election and suddenly you'll be out of a job. So it's, it's fair that they keep perhaps some interest going in a job where they can go back to if they get kicked out through no what, fault so, of their own. So, so, um, so, 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 so you'd say doctors, dentists, people like that, but the others, no. Not the well, others, no. Well, no, no. I, I would Everybody. say as long as there is 100% transparency, they then should they should them. be allowed a second, they should be allowed a second job as long as the being an MP doesn't become their side job, as long as the constituents are 100% Well, well, well let me ask, let me ask, let me ask Reem that. Reem, do you think they should be allowed second jobs? I, I do think it should be our second job. I think Belinda is right on that fact. So I think that you know fundamentally we shouldn't be restricting what members of parliament do outside of that. I mean, we you know we see the Labour Party always complaining about MPs' expenses, but then when they try to earn that money themselves outside of being an MP, then they're, they're also upset about it. So I think we can't really win there. I think that Belinda is right on that. I think that when MPs are able to work for themselves I, on, on the side of their job, it means that they have that sort of extra experience. Mm. I mean, um, there's multiple members of parliament. That are also doctors and nurses uh, that are sort of uh, on the side as well and it means that they have that real experience but also equally not just public servants but people that are in business those that understand yeah but but, but, well. but hold on a minute but, 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 but hang on a minute are. doesn't that mean that they they're serving two masters then you could have a conflict of interest even if they declare those interests and uh, the, the figure so far 17 million i mean i don't like the sound of it better be well, this is going to be a very rare occasion on which I'm going to disagree with Belinda. Um, I think it should be absolutely prohibited uh, mm. their having second jobs. We've seen repeatedly how MPs have abused their position as MPs and indeed as ministers of state and secretaries of state as a result of outside interests with other axes to grind, not just while they're in office, but actually even after they've left office. And I think we need to look at what they do after they leave office mm. very, very carefully. The problem, I think, with Belinda and Reem's approach is that there have to be a lot of as long as, as long as, and I think Belinda used that expression a couple of times, you know, in, 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 her, in her justification of them having second jobs. And, and that's the issue. You have to then start delving deeply into what these MPs are up to. And the, that's, not, that's not available to the electorate at large. And we've got so many examples already of where the system has been abused, that I think the only correct and right way to do it, and by the way, this, this applies very largely right across the private sector, is for people to only be allowed to have one job at a time. My employment contract with my company uh, prohibits me from having outside interests unless I get explicit permission from the board. But we are, of course, a private entity. The other point I'd make, and it's a very powerful point made by Belinda, that they should have broader experience of the real world. Uh, and I completely endorse that. But that experience should happen before they get into Parliament. So they take into Parliament with them, uh, you know, a broad experience of <laughs> services, professionals, business and so on. Well, let's get Peter in. Peter, what do you think? 
Well, I think the net is drawn very widely and loosely at the moment, and it should be drawn a lot more tightly. So, for example, there was a report, I think it might have been as far back as 2009, which said that MPs shouldn't be allowed to give advice on parliamentary strategies, basically, because there's a clear conflict between being a member of parliament and then advising businesses, and it tends to be a larger one, business, advising businesses on how to navigate parliament. And, of course, um, there are outside jobs within the rules where I think we could tie it up, and then there's breaches of the rules, like the Owen Patterson affair, um, which, which was a very serious one. I think there is a case for allowing some outside work if there's a demonstrable impact on public service and it's not all about self-enrichment. Uh, but what I'd say is the net is drawn very, very loosely, and that's what leads to public concern. That if mm. an MP is paid 85 grand, which is a lot anyway, a lot. and then earns several hundred thousand or a million, that their focus is on the million, not on the 85k, and representing all their constituents who voted for them. Mm, mm, yeah, and, and Belinda, you, you kind of said that it's good that they, because it's a fickle profession and they could be out of a job, but you could say that about any job. Any job is a fickle profession. This is a fickle profession. What you do is a fickle profession. Why, why should they get extra insurance plus 80-something grand? Don't forget, it's not just that. They've got expenses. Um, they've got loads of things. The salary is probably nearer £120,000. Um, well, why can't they just live on that? That's more than enough, surely. You know what, I think since since the Brexit vote, and I understand why people think this, but there there is a sort of conspiracy theory that all politicians are a little bit bent and a little bit corrupt and that they're all going to be open to this sort of dodgy business. And I really don't think that's true. I think the very few that do abuse their positions of power, the very few that breach the rules, like Owen Patterson, you know, they, they get they get either sacked or they resign. And, and that's what happens. But it's a tiny minority. I genuinely believe most MPs, even those who I vehemently disagree with, are in it because they want to do good. And I think it's unrealistic to expect the brightest and the best of what Britain can offer, why not? Where, where they could earn a salary of 500 No, no, no why not? And, and I think they should be able to continue something that gives them job security when they get, you know, back yeah, to the next election. Ben, Ben. Well, I was just going to say, I mean, what, what they earn as an MP or as a Secretary of State, which is different, of course, they get more if they, mm. if, they, if they have ministerial office. I think what they earn can be up for debate and maybe they should be paid more. Maybe yeah. we need to reform the whole basis on which they're remunerated, perhaps hold them to account on promises made against remuneration delivered. But I, I really firmly believe there should be no outside interest because then you get into the business of having to police the... You know, Peter talked about the net being drawn too loosely. Well, where is the appropriate tightness of this net? You know, the minute you open it up to them, mm. and I agree with Belinda, the vast majority of MPs probably are honest, but there's a significant minority who are dishonest. And the fact that Theresa May has made two and a half million quid in three years is an affront, I think, to democracy. You know, Matt Hancock had to stand down as a member of the par uh, a Conservative Party when he went off to the jungle. Why is it that it was a particularly tight um, net put around that activity, but they can go off and be directors of companies that create, absolutely create conflicts of interest? Well, well Reem, Reem, what do you think? Because I've been listening to this, I'm thinking, yeah, but I think £84,000 is enough anyway. Why should they get paid more than average person? The people that they're serving uh, don't get paid. Most of them don't get paid anything like that. Reem, what, what, what's your view on this? I just want to pick up on that point that Ben made about Matt Hancock and Theresa mm. May. Matt Hancock was suspended from the party because he left the country. He was off in Australia in the jungle. Theresa May is still serving her constituents whilst earning that £2.5 million. Pounds. That is not a front to democracy. That is how the world works. And actually, sort of But she must be that, doing a lot of outside work to get two and a half million quid. She can't be serving her constituents. How is it she's got two and a half million quid over three years? She can't it's be giving her constituents proper people attention. People of Maidenhead are perfectly happy with it. And I think that, Ben, that, that earlier point that you made about uh, MPs sort of having to have that experience earlier before they get into politics, things change. You know, the, the technological advancements occurring every single day. Industries are changing. People are changing. I think it's fantastic for MPs to still have their foot in the door in those industries <sighs> whilst they're still in Westminster. Well, don't you think that perhaps they then lose touch because a lot of most people can't do that? Um, final word to you, Peter. 
I think the issue is not ex-Prime Ministers because there's only a couple of those in Parliament, Boris Johnson, Theresa May, the rest are outside of Parliament. They're going to command huge sums. The concern is the dozens of people that have an employment relationship, so not Matt Hancock, who was essentially a freelance in the jungle, people that have an employment relationship for someone, especially in the city of London, that can net them hundreds of thousands of pounds, uh, well in excess of the work for which they're paid as members of parliament. And that really undermines uh, public concern over where their loyalties lie. You know, you shouldn't be working perhaps for a hedge fund or private equity, mm. earning something in the hundreds of thousands of pounds. That's completely different to retaining your role as a GP, uh, a, mi a minister giving sermons or a teacher helping out in the classroom.